Hi there, and welcome to the uh, FY22 Stats Survey webinar. Um, I'm Tracy Carr, uh, the State Data Coordinator, among uh, other things here at the Library Commission. So what, let's see, this will work. what are we doing here? Um, we're going to go over almost every question in the survey. Um, the complete survey is not available just quite yet. Baker and Taylor is still working on it. But the questions themselves are going to go over what, what they mean, what they're looking for. Um, so to do that, we're going to um, correct some of the assumptions about what information uh, the question is actually asking for. And then a little ditty about why it's important to provide the best answers you can to these questions. So the basics, um, the survey will be asking for data for the FY22 fiscal year, which is October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022. And the survey itself will be open between October 3rd and December 31st of this year. Um, there is the link to, um, uh, to log in on October 3rd, um, the new report, the new survey will be there. You can log in now if you want to look at the old one. Um, but that is the, the link. And the link is also on the statistics page of our website. So, um, and really what I want to encourage you to do at, at any point in this process, if you have a question, please ask me. And while I'm still pretty new in the state data coordinator land, um, I, we can figure it out together, whatever the situation is. So why do we have to do these stats again? Um, well, it's required by IMLS. Um, they are charged by, with, uh, by federal statute with data collection. And since they give us money, we have to do what they say and do the reporting. And then we require it of y'all um, you're required by state statute to provide an annual report to us, and we're required by state statute to obtain an annual report from you. Um, and just like IMLS, we provide funding to public libraries, and thus it is a requirement. So what, what is this information even used for? Uh, it informs federal reporting, and there's a link there to um, some of the ways, uh, some of the research and evaluation that IMLS um, does with the information that you all provide. Um, we put the information on MLC's website. It's under four libraries and then public library statistics to inform the public of what, what's going on in public libraries. Um, we use it a lot here uh, to develop special projects. Um, for instance, if we uh, have, let's say we have uh, a donation of 200 new children's books, uh, we may look at the stats to see um, who who has, you know, a the lowest or one of the lowest um, budgets for print materials, and then uh, make make a decision based on that. So. Um, we use it a lot to determine uh, needs or special projects. And then um, libraries often use uh, use the stats not to look at their own information, but to look at similar sized libraries um, information for budget requests. Like this is also a two county library. Uh, we have similar populations, but they are receiving more money. Therefore, please give us more money. Okay, some questions you might be asking yourself. Can't I just make it up? No, I know you would never do that, but don't even get the idea. Um, this this is important and you need to put the real numbers on here. Um, can't I just put the same numbers from year to year? No, there's, there's no chance that everything was exactly the same from year to year. You know what? I'm not saying there's not a fluke. You know, oh my gosh, you just happen to have the same exact number of visitors. Um, but there is no chance, zero, that all of your numbers are identical, even if, uh, oh, well, we had the same amount of people, the same amount of staff, that's not that, no. Um, so please put the correct numbers. Um, these are estimates, right? Nope. These are exact numbers. 
although there are a couple of questions where you can use an estimate. You need to say that you're using an estimate on those. And where am I supposed to get this info? Um, well, in theory, your system has been collecting it throughout the year. Although we are going to work on some, um, some templates for you to fill in monthly. So at the end, you'll have all the data uh, ready for me. Um, and just a note, last year, there, there were several questions that you didn't know you were going to have to answer. And hopefully that will not happen to you again. So, okay, let's start with the questions. Um, like I said, we're not gonna touch on every single question, but just the ones where I've, I need to tell you something about it. Um, for population of legal service area, I fill that in based on the um, census data as of April 1st of the next year. So that is one of the last things that, that gets done. So you can leave that blank. If it, um, it may uh, give you an edit check on that. And so if you'll put in a note and we'll talk about notes in a little while, just that MLC will supply or something like that. Um, your number of central libraries and the number of branch libraries should add up to be their total number of libraries. There should be one central library and then however many branches you have. Um, bookmobiles. So there are only, I think, two libraries with real bookmobiles um, right now. And bookmobiles have regular set hours and they operate kind of like a branch. So if you have an outreach ban and you occasionally um, bring some materials or bring a program or something to a place outside the library, that is not really a bookmobile as the definition uh, dates. Okay, um, this question, well, number two is ALA MLS librarians. How many people in your system have the library degree? The next question used to be um, number of librarians employed by system. So um, I've changed this to be closer to what the intent is. So not only does it need to include 21 2.1a needs to include number two, but also include other people who do library work. So it's it's uh, the number of people with a degree and other people whose primary job is doing library work. This doesn't mean we had a question um, if a, if your bookkeeper, you know, once a couple times a, a month fills in at the circulation desk, that is not a library worker. That would be someone in 2.2a, number of other staff employed by system. If most of the time your person is doing library work, then they are a library worker. Uh, 2.1b, the number of hours librarians and library workers work per week, that should be uh, the total. Like this one works 40 and that one works 37 and this one works 20. All of that added together, not just 40 hours if that's how, off, uh, how long you're open. Let's see, operating revenue. Um, if you get millage, put the millage there. And if you don't get millage, don't put anything there. Um, I had several people who leave a note that says, I don't get millage, that's fine. Just put whatever kind you get, whether it's millage or general funding um, for each of your towns and each of your counties. Um, and it will, it will add those up. Uh, operating revenue. So, um, Natalie will email you a list, um, a letter that has all of the grant funding that you received from us um, for the fiscal year. So you will have, you'll see what you got in PIG, in Health and Life, in LSTA. It will all be um, on this sheet of paper. That being said, I also have access to this sheet of paper. And so I, uh, I've gotten in the habit or this last year of just checking it against that. So if you wanna leave it blank, you're welcome to, and I will fill it in for you. It's perfectly fine. Um, other state grants, other grants from federal government and other operating revenue. For those three uh, questions, if you have something to put in that, um, in, the, in that answer, if you'll also leave a note to tell me what it is, um, just so I can make sure it's in the right 
place. So um, the Mississippi Humanities Council, a lot of folks put their um, grant funds in 6.4 other state grants, but Humanities Council money is actually federal money. So that would go into 7.2 other grants from federal government. Um, so the, the other operating revenue, that's, it's pretty much everything that's not, that the state doesn't give you or the feds give you. So, um, but E-rate, even though that is from the feds, E-rate is separate from other grants from federal government. It goes into to, uh, other operating revenue. So if you um, generate money from fines or fees or donations or, you um, E-rate, other kind of grants, like a dollar general grant that's not a federal or state grant, that would go under other operating revenue. On expenditures, um, it asks for your salaries and wages, expenditures, employee benefits, and then print materials. That is uh, just like it says, it's anything basically paper, um, books, magazines, um, any other paper thing I can't think of, electronic materials, that's going to be databases, ebooks, that sort of thing. Other materials expenditures, that would be DVDs, um, physical audiobooks, and any other non-traditional item that, um, that circulates, anything that's part of your collection. And then outside of those categories, the, your staff and your collection, Everything else that you spend money on is going to go into other operating expenditures. So programming materials, equipment, utilities, anything outside of your people and your collection goes in number 12. And then it all gets added together for 13. I didn't put a slide about capital revenue uh, and expenditures just because it's really rare. If you think you have um, you received capital revenue and you spent capital expenditures, let me know. Let's talk about it and make sure it's in the right uh, area. So moving on into the library collection, this is the number of items that you have. Um, later, we'll talk about how many times those items were used, but this is counting the materials themselves. So 16.1 print materials, that would, that's, that's your books um, and anything, anything printed. 16.2, so 16.2, A, B, and C are going to roll up into 16.2. So if a uh, library held ebooks is 16.2A, that's going to be, um, if you have a, uh, if you use OverDrive or, um, Access 360, and you uh, you select the, the books, right? You lease them or you buy them. You intentionally chose some books and you're giving some money to receive those books. Those are library held. Consortia held. If you're in a consortium and um, you make your uh, eBooks that you chose leased, bought, available to another library system and vice versa, the ones that your, your consortium friends have available um, those go into 16.2b. And 16.2c is when the uh, the ebook model is such that there's a big variety. You don't necessarily choose them. You just have them available and your patrons can choose the ones they want. So for this one, and this one is a little weird, you're not going to put the number of items available in the entire database like hoopla has like you know two million books or whatever the number is you're not going to put two million there that's not you don't have two million ebooks as part of your collection <clears throat> for this one you're actually going to put how many were actually used which i know we're in the counting the number of things not the usage but for hoopla ebrary freeding models like that we're going to put it in both places both in how many do we have and how many times were they used? 16.3 uh, physical units audio. So if that's a play away or it's a, a CD, something like that. Um, audio downloadable units. That's where your, um, your e-audio, like 
Hoopla has um, audiobooks there. You would put those there. Uh, same with video, the physical units, what is a tangible object that your patrons can check out and what is a downloadable title that they can listen to on the device. Then there is other circulating physical items. That's where your, uh, your, your weird things go. Um, if you circulate uh, cake pans or guitars or puppets or laptops even, the number of items goes in 16.7. So um, I'm not sure what I was gonna say. I just lost my train of thought, but oh, I know what it was. If it's a, it's a cake pan set of four, that's one item. But if it's four different ones that don't have anything to do with each other, then those, that's four cake pans, four items. So a set is one, individuals are separate. Um, then there is total physical items. So that's going to be your 16.1 your 16.3, your 16.5, and your 16.7 added together. And then uh, number 16 itself will add up everything besides 16.8, since that was really a subset of the others. Make sure I have everything from my notes. Okay. Um, other things uh, that we're counting in our library collection 17.1 is local electronic collections. So this is any database that you pay for that um, you make available to your patrons that is uh, like Ancestry, um, some kind of collection like that. If you leave this blank, there will be a problem later. Um, what I learned last year in my first year of being SDC is that so many of these rely on each other. So um Anyway, if you have a local collection, a, a local database, um, you'll put that number there. For 17.2, um, you know, I'm giving you the answer to one of your questions. It's 49. You can go ahead and put it in the minute uh, you first log in and feel a sense of accomplishment because you you know you, you have one correct answer. Uh, we have 49 uh, statewide databases. That's 47 in Magnolia, Heritage Quest, and Learning Express. Whether or not you use these, they are, they have been made available to your library. Um, your total print subscriptions, how many, you know, paper periodicals do you, you uh, do you have? Um, and how many items uh, were withdrawn in, during this period? How many items did you weed? All right, so we counted the items first, and now we're going to say how many times they were used. Uh, number 20 is gonna be filled in from your outlet information, um, which is at near the end of the survey. Uh, 21 library visits, how many people came into the library? Um, and then 21.1 is gonna ask, how did you come up with that number? Is it an estimate, which is perfectly fine, or is it a, a, the real number? Uh, the same with reference transactions. What's the number and how did you come up with it? Um, how many registered users do, did you have do you have? And um, do you have a, a overdue an overdue fine policy? So this is just a yes or no question and it is new this year. This is a federal question. Um, this the answer would be no if you don't charge fines for anyone. Uh, I know um, a number of you don't have any kind of uh, fine policy, and then a number of you have um, a fine, uh, you're fine free for uh, certain populations like children or um, senior citizens or um, or whatever. If you have, if you charge fines for anyone, then yes, you have a fine policy. Um, maybe in future years that will 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 add some nuance to that question, some follow ups, um, so you are able to report what populations don't um, don't have fees. But um, as of now, if you are charging fines, then yes, you have a, you have a, an overdue fine policy. Oh, one of the questions that is linked to another one. 
if you put that you have 500 library visits, and then when we get further on, you had 2,000 um, computer use sessions, the system is going to, going to say, how is it possible that 500 people used your computer 2,000 times? So that that is an example of how I didn't actually realize that these things were 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 connected. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, more usage of items, um, physical item circulation. That's all the things that you can touch and you can let people borrow. So all of your books, all of um, your DVDs and all of the non-traditional things, right? Like cake pans and bicycles or whatever. So 24 asks for everything that's physical that you checked out, how, you know, what's that number? And 24.1 is just asking about the other physical items, the, the weird things. Um, they don't have to be weird, but you know what I mean? They're not traditional library materials. Uh, 25 is your e-circulation. So those are going to be your, your e-book usage. Uh, 26 is your database usage. So I find that really confusing. I have to think about it for a moment. But um, 26A is your statewide database use. And I will fill that in since I have access to that. Your local database use, this is where if you said you have one Let's say you said you don't you didn't fill that one in or you said you have one local database use, but you put in here that you had 9000 usages of it. Well, if you don't have any local databases, how did you get 9000 usages out of that? So um, th those are talking to each other. Circulation of children's materials, that is a uh, children's material in your uh, in your catalog. If you have cataloged it that way, um, that would include um, books and DVDs and whatever else. Uh, that's what goes in 28. <clears throat> and then your total collection use, uh, sorry, the children's materials is a subset of your circulation. Um, your total collection is going to add up physical, electronic, physical, electronic, and your databases. Um, ILL. So one question is, how many times did someone uh, ask you for something? The next one, how many times did you give it to them? How many times did you ask for something and how many times did you receive it? So ILL does include books borrowed from other systems in your consortium. So if you have a shared catalog, um, with someone and you have a courier system or whatever system you have to loan items to each other, you may not call it interlibrary loan and you probably don't use Beehive for that, but it is considered an ILL. Um, but it doesn't include books that are sent from one branch to another. All right, let me, let me get, uh, get ready for this. So library programs, uh, this was a uh, fairly nightmarish aspect of the stats last year. Um, part partial part of it was that it was uh, there were a lot of new questions, and then the other part was that they were uh, the the wording was very confusing. So, um, with thanks to the stats working group, we have reworded um, these questions, and hopefully. We all know what all of these words mean. So um, 31 is total number of live library programs. How many times did you have a program that was uh, available in real time for people to watch? So the next five questions are about um, who the programs were targeted to. Um, for children zero to five, for children 6 to 11, for young adults 12 to 18, adults 19 and over, or anyone at all in general interest. So um, last year there was another question that just said targeted at children. Um, and then there was also the, the, the two children categories. So they've eliminated the uh, the general children 
uh, question. So you're going to have to make a decision which age group your program was targeted to. And I understand this is going to be a little difficult because many of you may have had summer library program um, activities or programs where it was, it's really for anyone. It's really a, a children's pro, definitely a children's program, but maybe not super targeted. So I would encourage you to um, look at it like if you had a story time and there was a craft that was really more appropriate for a three-year-old, I would say that that is a program targeted to the zero to five group. I don't want children's programming to get lumped into general interest, but you'll have to make a decision about which age group was really targeted in, in order to report accurately on this, uh, those children's programs. So all of the age group ones, 31.1 through 31.5, those have to add up to be 31. So you you had a bunch of programs. Here's who they were targeted to. In theory, that's the same number. Likewise, 31.1, 32. I don't know what I just said. 32.1, 32.2, and 33. Those should also add up to be 31 because they the number of live in-person programs at the library, another location, or virtual. Well, if you had 10 programs, they had to be somewhere. So where were they? Were they here? Were they there? Or were they online? And number 34 is um, a new question this year that replaces one that was at the outlet level. It's the number of self-directed or passive programs. Um, this is going to be uh, A, at the system level. Um, and B, this is the first time we're, we're adding this. Um, so, it, you know, all bets are off as, as to what that number is going to look like. Um, but this is going to be for things like grab and go programs, or, um, if you put a puzzle out or you have a makerspace station. So instead of, um, I think with the grab and go, which was the previous, way we asked this question, it was number of grab and go materials distributed, which means that if you set out 200 pieces of paper for people to come pick up, that was 200 items. Instead, we're calling a program like you put out a new coloring sheet once a week. Okay, 52 weeks, that's your program. You had 52 programs. Um, and one, one way to define a self-directed or passive program is that it's not at a specific time and it doesn't require staff supervision. That doesn't mean a staff member isn't available to answer a question, but it's not on your calendar. It's not come to the library at 10 o'clock on Tuesday for this event. Um, it's, it's a thing you can do while you're in the library too. All right, checking my notes, seeing if I hit everything I was supposed to. All right, um, the second half of library programs, it, the first one was how many did you have? Now it's how many people came to them. So much like uh, the previous slide, 35 is total attendance at live programs. And 35.1 through 35.5 are, those are the questions about what age group was targeted for these programs. And 31.1 through 35. 0.5 have to add up to be 35. And uh, same goes with 36.1, uh, 36.2, and 37 attendance at live in-person programs at the library, at another location, and virtually. That number is going to be the same total number as 35. So I expect this to be a little tricky this year. Uh, but at least we, I, we, me and y'all know that this is the expectation. I, I guess it makes sense now that I've thought about it and explained it, but these numbers were all over the place last year. And um, I did not realize that that was going to be the case. So we are going to do better this year.
Then we have um, recorded library programs. So how the total number of recorded program presentations. Um, how many times did you record a story time and uh, put it on your Facebook page? Um, it gets complicated if you recorded a thing that uh, was also happening live, but it's doable. So let's say you had a um, you had a story time in the library, and you uh, you read to you know fifteen kids showed up, but you also recorded it. So that would be a live in person program at the library, and it would be a recorded program presentation. Um, you, the, this changed from last year. Last year it asked um, how many views within seven days, and they've changed it to how many views of those presentations within 30 days. Um, and I have instructions here on how to um, how to how to check those uh, those views. So this is the one for Facebook. And I'll just pause so you can pause this webinar and then go to Facebook and find this number. And then here are the instructions for how to find it on YouTube. All right, um, connectivity. We have done away with the very long and somewhat terrible um, internet usage uh, survey that you were giving your patrons twice a year. Um, that information uh, was getting, uh, fewer and fewer people were doing the survey. Um, and the information was not as robust as uh, it used to be, and it also wasn't as relevant. So um, we decided that that could go away. Thanks again to the Stats Working Group for their input, um, just to make, make this a little less um, cumbersome. So we're going to, on con uh, connectivity, we're asking how many internet computers are used by the general public? Um, this, let's see, we had a question in the live version of this. If you have computers people can check out and use at the library, that would count as an internet computer used by the general public. If you have computers that people can check out and take out of the library, that would go into that other physical item category of, of the stats. A uh, number of uses or sessions of public internet computers per year. Uh, that may be something you you have a real number for, or it might might be like okay, you you do the survey or you uh, you monitor how many people are using the computer for two weeks, and then you uh, multiply that to get a number. So thirty nine point one is going to ask: Is that an estimate or is that a real number? Um, the total number of PCs in the library system that includes staff computers. Um, so 38 is asking how, how many computers can patrons use? 40 is how many total do you have in your bill in your libraries? Um, wireless sessions, uh, that's hopefully whoever provides your uh your Wi-Fi or however that works will have that number for you. Um and the reporting method for number of wireless sessions. Or you um, I know some libraries might uh for a week walk around. And, and notice how many people are uh, on phones or laptops or um, iPads or something and use that as an estimate. And then 41.2, the number of library website visits. If you're one of the 28 libraries um, whose website that MLC hosts, we can, um, we can find that number for you. All right, we have the COVID questions, which uh, I think this is the third year now that COVID questions have been around, but I've moved them towards the end of the survey. They were kind of in a weird place before. Um, some of the, the wording on this I find a little confusing. Um, 42.1 is easy. Did you have to close because everybody had COVID at any time? Yes, we, 
you know, close for a week. Great. That would be a yes. Public services during COVID-19. It makes it sound like, like it's over. And as we know, um, you know, we are still continuing to, we're, we're still in COVID-19, maybe not as much, but um, it's still going on. So uh, I would guess uh, and hope that all of you would say yes to public services during COVID-19. Yes, you you continue to provide services. Um, electronic library cards issued during COVID-19. So if you started uh, issuing a special electronic card and continue to do it this fiscal year, that would be yes. If you continued or uh, had reference service during COVID-19, uh, that would be a yes. Um, I know that in the beginning, some libraries had tables set, out, set up outside and maybe had computers or laptops set up. If you've continued to have outside service, um, that would be a yes. Um, and same with uh, the, the Wi-Fi access. If you added to it or if that access increased, those would be yeses. And then 42.8, I don't think this really applies uh, necessarily to um, the way libraries are set up in Mississippi. Um, you're Y'all are your own political subdivision, so there's really no place else for you to assign your staff. But in places that have municipal libraries or county, real county libraries that are governed by the county, uh, staff might have been reassigned to another uh, municipal department like the water department or something. All right, we're in the home stretch here in outlet information. Uh, let's see. Most of this should be filled in already, especially um, this 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 particular stuff. Um, this one though, I wanted to say a few things. Uh, number fifty-seven. Uh, th again, this will be pre-filled for you. If your square footage has changed, you will definitely need uh, a note. So a few years ago, um, we made sure that the number in your circulation matched the number, oh, I'm sorry, there's the square footage in your stats matched the square footage in your E-rate applications, because we want to make sure that everything we're reporting to various federal authorities is the same. Um, so uh, if, if your library expanded, if it remodeled and you got you know 300 more square feet, um, put it, put that in the note. And, and, uh, so I can understand why that happened. Um, number 62 public service hours per year. I have a, um, a spreadsheet I can send out that, um, is, it, it has an easy way for you to figure out how many hours, uh, you were open per year. So, um, there is a tiny error here. 63 is number of weeks library was open, actual weeks. So we all know 52 weeks are in a year. Um, but the next one, number of weeks library was closed due to COVID-19. If that, if you were closed for two weeks, you're going to have to put 50 for number of weeks library was open. A lot of you also might have had a closure due to something else that wasn't COVID. So just make sure that, uh, if you were closed for six weeks because there was a tornado or a flood or whatever situation that you're reporting the actual weeks and it does have to be full week. So if it's, you know, two days, I would not count that as a week close. But if we're talking half the week, we'll call that a full week that you were closed. So the outlet service hours calculator is what I will, I will send out. All right, a couple of general notes. Um, Oh, and the very last section of your survey will be your administrative board of trustees information. And I've asked that the um, that it autofill from last year. So at least even if you've had some board changes, you don't have to re-input all of that information for all of your board members, especially for those of you who have like 10 board members. That's a lot of stuff to have to re-put in, resubmit every year. Um, so it, hopefully you'll just have to delete one of them or uh, whoever, however many have um, have rolled off of your board. 
Um, flags and edit checks. Um, this is, we talked about notes um, before. So when you're done with your survey, you will go to submit it. And if you have et some edit checks, it'll pop up and say, hey, you have to resolve these. Um, usually it's because there's been a big change. Like if you, um, uh, last year, there were a lot of you had edit checks because you you're, um, you had many more programs than the year before when uh, COVID really impacted things. And so if you just will write COVID impacted last year's number or something, something, if you put anything in the note field, it will let you um, proceed. And if it's data that MLC supplies, you can just write MLC or MLC supplies or whatever, um, just so it will let you submit your, um, your thing. So the way that works, you, you try to submit and uh, it shows you those edit checks. Sometimes if you can't resolve them, let me know. I can go in and um, see what I can do. After that, after everyone has theirs in, I review and th there are often things that I can see that need to be fixed. Then I send them to the feds and then their system um, tells me all the things that don't work. And then once I resolve those, um, there are uh, people at PLS, the Public Library Survey, who then review every tiny bit of data and and ask questions about it. So there are lots of um, steps of this review process, and it lasts all year, which is a fun fact. I did not know until I started doing this particular task. So um, it's a good time all the way around. Um, reminders. So when you log in, you'll have the, uh, the option of displaying your information from last year. That way, um, I talked before about if there is a big jump in numbers, um, you can just go ahead and say, this is correct. Or, uh, you know, hired a new children's program or, or whatever the reason is that the number, um, went up or went down. Um, if something is grayed out, and it needs to be corrected and grayed out means you can't you can't type in there if you'll put the correct info in the note and then I will fix it and like I said I didn't realize how many questions were interlinked and putting inaccurate information on one means that all of these others um, can be affected and uh, if nothing else please uh, if your takeaway today is this please ask me if you have a question I am i um, happy to help and I am here to help. Um, I know that this is no one's idea of a good time. And uh, I want to make this as painless as possible for you while getting the most accurate information we can to report what's going on in our state. So thank you. And if you have any questions, please contact me. And um, on October 3rd, when this when this opens, I, um, uh, again, uh, I, I expect to be hearing from many of you. So thank you very much. <laughs>